Serpent's Heart. Serpent's Heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take Serpent's Heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life. We're going to speak on business. You're gonna shine bright. We are going to witness business with a servant's heart. Servant's heart. With host Steve Ramon and Ray. Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks. Servant's heart. Listen to the podcast. Steve Ramona. Brainshare Business Mentors proudly presents. Brainshare.us, the ultimate business education platform, delivering the proven systems, processes, tools, and knowledge that empower you to build the business of your dreams. With 13 high-powered courses encompassing over 240 lessons accessed online on your schedule. Running a business is the hardest thing you'll ever do. We've helped thousands of business owners gain the leadership, communication, and business skills needed to build the business of their dreams. We can help you. Choose your learning path. Scuba Squad is the premier membership program for today's business leaders with access to all Brainshare material and double our money-back guarantee. Brainshare Basics, the ultimate business framework course, a hard-hitting 13-week program to lay the necessary foundation to build the business of your dreams or take individual courses as you need them. Every course has dozens of lessons with video, practical exercises, precise documentation, and the opportunity for direct feedback from a Brainshare mentor. All programs have our exclusive 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked, don't wait. Choose your path and start today. Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose. Serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to learn how to do business and live life to make an impact in the world. As you're listening to my awesome guest today, I want you to think about who you're going to serve, who and how you're going to serve today, and what impact will you create today? If we all make an impact by serving, this world will be such a better place. And I want to thank my sponsors, Brainshare.us. Build a business that works without you. Discover how to create a self-sustaining business that thrives even in your absence. You can have a business that doesn't tie you down. We'll guide you through the steps to build an enterprise to operate smoothly without your constant oversight. Visit Brainshare.us to learn how to set the foundations for a business that stands the test of time. With Brainshare me Business Mentors, you can build a business that works without you. And PitchDB.com. Successfully connect with 11,000 conferences, 3 million podcasts to be a guest and build your thought leader platform and help scale your business. Increase your network and build your expertise. I am going to now get into the show I've been waiting for for a while. I met this guest uh, probably a few months ago, not, uh, six, seven weeks, doesn't matter. But he made a huge impact on my life. Just that first meeting, which I always say when a door opens, walk into it because you never know. If it doesn't work out, you can walk back out. This, <laughs> I say it, it just makes me smile. He has a faith-driven bank that's <laughs> really growing with faith. And we'll talk about impact. If you have faith, we feel that you can have impact. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. It's so good to be with you today. I'm not a big background guy, but I do had to ask, and, and especially on the show, is a faith-driven bank, why? <laughs> well, <laughs> honestly, because uh, we we purchased uh, Regent Bank back in 2008, April Fool's Day of 2008, and you're familiar, I can, I can go into it if we have time, but you're familiar with the miracle, uh, the Lord literally saved it in 2009, uh, we became a, what you would call a Christian uh, bank operating under Christian principles back then. And then about <clears throat> eight years ago, uh, I went through a discipleship group that really changed my life. It taught me to have an intimate, abiding relationship with Jesus. And I just started 
trying to listen and obey. And what you see here is really just the result of that. It's There's not really any magic. I'm just trying to listen to the way that he would direct uh, me as the leader of this organization and obey. And what he has done here is, uh, as you know, pretty remarkable. Yeah, your massive growth, you know, a big part of it. I, I do want to delve in this in our first conversation. You talked about your bank's open to all faiths, Buddhist, Judaism, yes. um, all those different. And I love that. But why did you incorporate that in the bank, not just being a Christian bank? You know, number one, it's really the law. And so, you know, one of the things that a, a huge misnomer in our business world today is that it is illegal to bring your faith into the workplace. I thought that. I am finding that about nine out of 10 um, business leaders think that. And that is not the truth. The, the truth is you can bring your faith in. You just have to offer it. You can't force somebody to worship the way that you worship. And if you worship a certain way, which I worship uh, Jesus Christ, if you worship this way, you have to give others the same opportunity. Uh, and I want to do that. I, we're not trying, we're not here trying to push uh, religions or faith away. We are simply giving people the openness and opportunity to share what they believe. And uh, thus far in our company, you know, we're 15 years in, really a Christian faith based um, programs, if you will, have really been the only things that have, have been introduced here. But if somebody tomorrow says, hey, I want to have a, a Muslim study of the Quran, they absolutely can do that uh, within our four walls. So powerful. That is a servant's heart right there. Doors open for everybody if they want to, again, like I said earlier, walk through. Yes. What are the benefits that you've seen bringing the Christianity faith into your bank and your business? It's literally a business. Steve, we could spend our whole 30 minutes on this one question, but let me let me just give you a couple of examples. The 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 benefit has been the love that our employees feel. So uh, about two weeks ago, I was, and I'm like you, I have really no concept of time, so maybe it's longer, but I'm gonna say two weeks ago. I was in a luncheon with our new employees that we had hired in the prior quarter. And uh love to get to meet them, love to get to know them. And I asked them to all tell their story. And the lady that was three seats down from me uh, was telling her story. And she said, I've just got to tell you, she said, I have been working for 34 years. And this is the first place where I have ever felt loved at work. And man, I was very touched by that. And the lady next to her said, well, I'll one up you. I'm 57 years old. And this place is the first time I've ever felt loved period. And I lost it. Oh my God, I can't imagine make me start crying now. Additionally, um, I really felt called that we would have a prayer team uh, within the bank. And so I, it was early morning. We were just talking about early morning, spending time with God. I, I was, I was uh, trying to listen for my direction for the day. And I got this kind of, I felt like a download that we needed to be a praying organization. So I come to my office, I send out an email to everybody bank wide and say, Hey guys, <clears throat> as always, this is totally voluntary. But if any of you like to pray for others, I feel like we need to start a prayer team here at the bank. And so we ended up, we have about 60 or 70 employees that are on this prayer team. So people will email their prayer request to prayerrequest at regent.bank. Well, as you can imagine, this has leaked out into the community. We're not advertising it, but people just learn about it. So they start emailing regent.bank. The head of my prayer team is our internal auditor. Her name is Pam. Unbeknownst to me, Pam started tracking the prayer, uh, the result of the prayers. She brought to me, uh, it, it was right after the first of the year, a printout of 157 answered prayers from that prayer team. She had followed up with the people. And Steve, I'm telling you, there were miracle after miracle after miracle on this list. It was crazy. So what it does is it completely changes the way that we think about work. You know, we want to be a great bank. We were really started out, we really started as a business bank that we wanted to just serve 
small and mid-sized family-owned businesses. And we still do that, but now our employees have a greater purpose. I have a greater purpose. You know, as I am meeting with a client, I'm not just thinking about how am I going to get their money? I'm thinking about how can I sow into their life? How can I brighten their day? How can I be the light on the hill that Jesus called us to be in this one meeting? And it just changes your whole perspective on uh, your work. So that's that's uh, that's the short version. But the truth is, it's changed everything about the company. John, so many lessons, even pulling the faith out of it. You built a community, powerful for a business. You brought love into business, which doesn't happen a lot. I spoke to 30,000 people, brought that in, and people were like, oh my God, I want love in my business. It doesn't have to be the love of your spouse or love of your family, but to having that loving and graciousness and gratitude for your employees, those are huge lessons that anybody can do in any business, right? They really are. You know, we we launched a, a faith and work movement. It's called uh, 94X. And within the book, we list 12 principles to a faith-based organization. But in them are the things we all want to be anyway, right? I mean, they're not, it's not, this is not radical. This is just, it's the golden rule. It's, are you generous? Are you loving? You know, are you abiding? Are you obedient? You know, are you uh, showing love to every one of your employees? I mean, it just, it is, you know, when people read it, it's like, oh my God, that's that's the kind of company I'd want to work at. Well, yeah, that, that's what Jesus taught. And so all we are doing is passing that along uh, to our employees. But I, I, I told you when we were talking earlier that to us, it seems very, very normal. It just seems, but to other people, it seems so radical. And, and what happens, Steve, not to belabor the point, but let me just for your listeners, you have to understand this. We don't have any turnover. Every one of our positions are uh, full. We have tons of applications for every position. You know, we're best place to work nationally and within our state. Number one bank in America to work in. I mean, all of these are results of bringing love into your organization. We just, we believe that God is, I, I certainly do, and, and our, our uh, uh, organization believes that God is the origin of love. That's the, that's the difference is we give him the credit for the love that we provide because he loves us. Above self-interest. It's all God. It's above your self-interest. I'm going to ask you, I don't think it'll be a tough question, but an interesting question. Give me one sentence that describes your culture. Yeah, I did put you mm, on the spot, but yeah, you're no, such a it's smart a, it's, guy. <laughs> that's a very, very good. Well, and, and let me, let me, I'm going to give you our purpose statement, yeah, perfect. which I think really does explain it. And our, our, our stated purpose, it's on our website, it's on all of our materials, is to show God's love to our employees, clients, and communities. And our belief truly is if we can just do that, all the numbers, all the growth, all the net income, all the return on investment, shareholders, all of that really does take care of itself at the end of the day. We are not uh, perfect, okay? <clears throat> we are not. We make mistakes all the time. I've got a tough employee issue that I get to deal with tomorrow, but we are trying very, very hard uh, to be the organization that we believe God would want us to be and um, and it just it, it's just a little bit of if you just open the door a little bit, he'll take it and run with it. Uh, I promise. Moving the direction of God. Maybe it's baby steps. Maybe it's a leap, but you're moving in that direction. God mm -hmm. made us fallible. We're going to make mistakes. I, I'm learning that it's OK to make mistake. He will still love me. And that's so powerful. Amen. You know, in regards to God, there's so many lessons that you just put out there. And, and, and the other lesson is your purpose is your culture. They have to be connected, right? Yeah. Yes. Talk about that because there's business owners and entrepreneurs thinking of, are listening right now. So, um, so often, so I, I get to spend Monday uh, with the executives at Chick Fil A um, in Atlanta, another very purpose driven uh, organization, and 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 what we talked about is the fact that many, many, many companies say one thing and act in a different way. And what what I was just telling them, I, I 
I've got an issue with an employee who um, I really like this employee, but they have been uh, dishonest uh, in a way that goes against the core values of the organization. Okay, so it is not my wish to reprimand, demote, release them. But the problem is, in my opinion, you're very, very hypocritical. If you stand up and say, you know, this is our purpose. These are our core values. This is what we're going to live by. And then you don't do it. I just, you lose total credibility. Your employees don't trust you nor respect you. Um, they can't believe anything you say. And so I, I I just think we have to drive as leaders to make those two things match. And you got to look inside first. One of the things we talked about in 94X is, you know, is uh, the concept of, of uh, consistency, making sure that, again, not per not perfection. Uh, you're right. We're not we're not going to be perfect. Uh, we're fallible. Only Jesus was perfect. But being consistent in all areas, always having integrity, always being kind, always being caring, treating everybody the same, not, you know, treating the executives well and stepping on the lower level. people. I mean, all of those things, you we have to fight for those. And our executive team, um, for example, when we when we created our core values, we stacked hand, we literally walked to the middle of the conference room stacked hands and said, okay, we all promise that we will abide by these and we will patrol these. We will make sure they are lived out. And we have done, a, our team has done a really good job of that. Powerful story. Here's why I'm going to pull it apart a little bit because I love what you just said. And I talk about a servant's heart will say no if it doesn't fit the community and culture of a business. Because I know a lot of people that lot, but I've heard the business owners, I've talked to them, I, I don't want to fire this guy. I don't want to deal with that. You're causing right more harm keeping, in this case, a dishonest employee than you are saying, oh my God, my servant's heart says, no, keep them. You're going to benefit them and you're going to benefit yeah. your business, correct? That is correct. That is correct. And and we're, and we're always going to do it in a compassionate way. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give this person plenty of time. We're not going to just throw them out on the street. I mean, we're going to make sure they land. But yes, I think they'll learn something. If they're going to learn something from this, I certainly think we will be true to who uh, we are uh, as an organization. And uh, we are we are just believing that God, I mean, you know, Romans tells us he, he will work things uh, out for those who love him to the, to the glory for those who love him. And so yeah. we, uh, we believe that we believe that will happen. So we've established you 15 years, you have a great culture, business is growing your numbers, you know, the dollars and you're working one of the fastest growing banks. So what's a piece of advice, a new incoming, you know, professional wants to enter the banking business? Should they say no, run away? Or what do you think? I think it's a great business. So let me put this into perspective for your viewers. Okay. We started uh, with $72 million in assets in 2008. Okay. Bought the bank April of 2008. Today, we are almost uh, $1.7 billion in assets. So we are talking about literal uh, nation leading growth. So it has been unbelievable. And you can see here that I am not that smart. Okay, it doesn't take the 13 minutes that we've been on the air to figure that out. So we know that all glory goes to God. So yes, I believe uh, the reason I love the banking business is because you are working with business owners as their partner. Okay, you're, both of you want them to be successful. I want them to be successful. They do too. So you're in lockstep. You're moving together. You know, you you always want to be uh, fair, but ideally, you are much more than just a banker. You're you're a coach. You're a mentor. You are adding value to them. And ultimately, for me, my customers are many of my best friends. And so that's why I love the industry. I'm not trying to sell somebody something that they don't want. You know, I'm not trying to create fear to sell something to somebody. I am helping them literally achieve the uh, dreams that they have for themselves. So it's great. The piece of advice that I would have, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and give two. <clears throat> One Either is <laughs> do something I didn't do and be patient. Okay. If you are entering any workforce, but in particular, this industry, 
learn, 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 learn. I got over promoted early, have been over promoted. I'm over promoted right now. And so I wish that I would have had more time to learn the building blocks of the business and how the operations work and the find out everything worked. But I was a bank president very, very young, and I just have not really had that luxury. So be patient. Uh, the other one is listen. Always listen. When you're young, listen to learn. When you are older and in more of a senior position, listen to learn. There is not, you don't know everything that there is to know. And particularly as you get into an executive level position, the answers are on the front line. The answers are not around the executive team tables. You got to go talk to the people, ask them what's not working, ask them what is working. Listen, listen, listen. Love That'd the listen. Fine. Listen is such a key. And, and then add to that, ask questions. That's the important thing too, as you listen and learn, go, hey, Sean, I've heard this from you. Da, 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 and then you move on. Yes. And it's great what you're saying about partnership. I wrote that down. I'm a big believer of that in any business. And here's the cool thing, what you're saying is if I am a service provider, I have customers, they're your partners. Treat them like partners. Now, maybe not like, Apple and, and Warren Buffett partnering up, that's a whole different, but you're saying like you, you have individual people that have bank accounts there, right? Right. So there you, you partner up with them, correct? Correct. And how do you do that with just an individual person and not a business? Well, we're in, we're, it, it is all about how do we enrich each other's lives? Okay. They are, they are helping us by doing business with us. And we are great. We're very grateful for that. Without mm -hmm. them, we wouldn't have a job. I'd be fired. So on the flip side, how do I add value to them? Well, it's going to be very different for an individual than it is for a business, but we can help them establish credit, improve their credit. You know, we can uh, invite them into our daily devotional uh, that we do every day. You know, we can provide them with, uh, uh, you know, tips and ideas for improving their retirement. There's a lot of things we can do. So, but the, but the key here, Stephen, my opinion is motive. Okay, my motive is to help you. Okay, my motive isn't to make money off of you. My motive is to help you. And so, if that means that's a service that I provide, fantastic. If it's better for you to go across the street, you need to go across the street. I mean, just having the abundance mentality to know there's plenty of business. All I need to do is focus on meeting your needs. So that that's what partnering looks like to, to me on an individual uh, basis. A better customer base is always going to grow in you know, 15 years. So you've proved that much longer than most businesses go, building that culture of customers. We always talk about employee culture, and that's super important. Yeah. But now you've crossed the bridge and said, I want my customer culture always going to support them. My tellers are going to support them. They're going to work with them. They're going to solve problems. But what I love that goes across the board for every business. Yes, it, it does. And, and it all works so well together. Yeah. I mean, we know this. We all know this, but practicing it is a different uh, ball game. If we love the employees, okay, take the time, go check on them, learn who their husband and, and wife and kids are and check on that. When we do that, when they are loved, they will love the customer. I mean, we know that when we treat them poorly, they're going to treat the customer poorly. It is crazy. Let, let me give you a really great example. I just flew back late last night from uh, Nashville. So I am in the Nashville airport. It has one complete feel and culture. The people there feel a certain way. I fly to Atlanta because we don't have very many direct flights in Tulsa. So I fly to Atlanta, totally different culture, feel. Nashville, so, so kind, so helpful. So, I mean, you could just well-led, well-managed. You could just feel it. Atlanta, chaos rude, you know, just, I mean, it was very unprofessional. I mean, it was just I, I, night and day, both airports, both doing the same thing. It truly does come down to leadership and care it makes all the difference. 
And you just did a real time why you want to be careful of that. Cause you just told 10,000 people about the Atlanta airport. You're being honest. Being You're honest. not lying. I'm, I'm being honest. It's the truth. I'm not trying to bring anybody down, but it was to me, it was such a poignant example of two literal commodities that are doing the exact same business, 180 difference, 180 degree difference in the experience. This is so great. This has been, we're right at the end of the show. This is so, Sean, you got my, just, I got bumps on the, <laughs> well, we're two, the, we're two peas in a pod. Yeah, we, we a, sure, we sure we are. So I'm going to end with this. And I think this, I'm so excited to ask you this. We've talked about being we're fallible. God made us fallible, which is great. We know we're going to make mistakes. So let's make you fallible. What's your most embarrassing moment? Oh my gosh. I have, I have many, but let me give you the most famous one. Okay, I'll give the most famous one. I was in the uh, second grade, grew up in Beggs, Oklahoma, population 1000 south of Tulsa. We, my buddy and I wanted to ride in the uh, bikeathon, the St. Jude's bikeathon. Okay, and this is all off the cuff now. You can tell your listener, you didn't tell me you were going to ask me this, but nope. this is how etched it is in my memory. <laughs> I didn't know how to ride a bike. So it's Sunday afternoon and the bikeathon is on Monday. So my mom buys me an Otasco banana seat bike and we go out in the front. She pushes me up and down the gravel driveway till I stop falling down. We call it good. And the next day, my buddy Pooh Bear and I jump in the front of the bikeathon line, and we are beating everybody. So you you would drive, you would drive right around this uh, mile long loop, okay? And you went from the high school around to the elementary school and back to the high school. We're in the lead. We come through the elementary school parking lot. All our friends are out there. They give us a little water, little Dixie cups. I mean, we are uh, the kings of the world. And we keep driving. And before you get to the high school, there's this big uh, hill. OK, so the hill goes down very steep, turns back to the left. And I had never ridden down a hill before. So when I go down the hill, I freeze. OK, so this the road turns back to the left. I keep going straight all the way through a six wire barbed wire fence with three layers of electric fence on it. OK, somehow I get through it. Doesn't, it doesn't mess up my face. I have 33 stitches, OK, all over my body. I am standing there getting shocked on the electric fence. And this guy, Bobby Wesley, who's my neighbor, comes out there. For some reason, he has a machete in the eighth grade and he he cuts me off of the fence. So I live. They take me, get me sewed up to this day. All those poor riders have to ride up that hill. Because of me. Oh my because God. of my so all these I'm 50 years old. I was uh what seven at the time for 43 years, thousands of kids have now had to ride up the steep hill because of my failure to be able to ride a bike. You're there leaving you legacy. You left a legacy <laughs> for life. A hundred years now, people are gonna come. That is such a great story. Man, I love it. Real quick, uh, <laughs> before we run out, run out of time, how can people connect with you or get connect the bank? Find more, oh, more information. Yeah, yeah, we would love it. Our our website is regent.bank. Um, if they want to check that out, uh, you know, they're always welcome. Our, our main number is 918-488-0788. They can always call and ask for me. Uh, our, our faith and work movement is 94xmovement.com. If you want to bring God into your business, uh, we help you do that. And uh, anybody's welcome. We'd love, love to hear from your listeners if they want to have follow-up conversations or if we can help them in any way. I had a business, 94x would be calling you tomorrow. I'm a solopreneur, but I know people I'm going to share that with because I think it's so powerful. I want to thank, thank you. you so much for just a great show. I had a lot of fun. You had, we were laughing and that's what it's about, this great conversation, but you left us so many great nuggets. Um, and with those nuggets that Sean gave you, use the forward and backward arrow on your podcast or on your YouTube. That's the power of it. And, and sharing this the last six months, you hear something Sean said, maybe it's 94X, go back and forth, listen to it over and over. I'd love for you to listen to the whole podcast, but that's not my goal. That's not Sean's goal. If we have one person learn something inspired or motivated, we've done our job as a great podcast. And that's 
all we can ask for. And I want to thank my sponsors, pitchdb.com and brainshareus.us. Reach out to them. Don't forget my podcast swag. The link will be in the chat. And I want to thank you all for being part of doing business with the Servants Heart podcast. We'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.